While changing the brakes on our Jeep Cherokee, we notice the grinding noise coming from one of our wheel hubs. This means that the wheel bearing is bad. In this episode, we're going to replace the wheel bearing. Before we get started, we're going to put the Jeep on jack stands and remove the wheel. We start by removing the brake caliper. Note that as we are not replacing the caliper, there is no need to undo the brake drop hose banjo bolt. Make sure that you don't let the caliper hang on the drop hose. I use a zip tie to hang the caliper off the suspension. With the caliper off, the rotor can be removed and inspected. As this rotor is still new, it's going to be reused. First we have to remove the cotter pin and spindle nut retainer. This is what prevents the spindle nut from backing off when driving. The spindle nut is now removed using a socket and impact driver. I use a wrench levered between the hub and the wheel stud to prevent the hub from rotating. As this is not a 4x4, the spindle is only used to preload the bearings and can be easily removed. On a 4x4 it can't be removed as it forms part of the front side shaft. On a 4x4 what you would need to do is to remove the hub over the spindle. The three bolts that hold the hub on have rusted rather badly and rather than try and remove them I'm going to take the angle grinder and cut the ends off and then replace them with new bolts. By doing that I don't have to pull the rusty section all the way through the hub. Using a 12 point socket, I can now remove the three hub bolts. It takes a little bit of persuasion with a chisel and some jacking bolts to remove the hub. You could clearly feel the play in the bearing, as well as hearing it grinding as you were spinning it. Before I start reassembly, I'm going to take the opportunity to remove as much rust as possible using a chisel, a flapper disc and a wire wheel or whatever you have available. Before I start reassembly, I'm going to smear some never sees between the hub seating faces so that if I ever have to remove the hub in future it will be much easier to do. I can now install the new hub making sure to put the dust shield behind it. I would have preferred to put a new dust shield in but I did not have one so the old dust shield will have to do. I installed the three new hub bolts and then tighten them down hand tight. Once all three hub bolts are hand tight, I can torque them to their final torque of 75 foot-pounds according to my book. Clicked. Can you hear it? Yeah. Clicked. Clicked. Alright, all three are taut. Apply a little never seize onto the splines of the spindle, then reinstall the spindle. I can now install the spindle nut. I use an impact driver to snug up the spindle nut.
According to the book I have, the spindle nut should be torqued to 175 foot-pounds. I'm going to use a pry bar wedged between the hub and a lug nut to hold the hub while I apply torque to the spindle nut. I install the Belleville washer under the spindle nut retainer and then install the cotter pin through the shaft and the spindle nut retainer. And the purpose of the cotter pin and spindle nut retainer is to prevent the spindle nut from undoing while the drive shaft is rotating. It's very important that you bend the ends of the cotter pin over and firmly seat them back against the shaft. This makes sure that they don't catch on anything and bend straight again. In my opinion it's the person who talks the spindle nut's responsibility to make sure that they install the spindle nut retainer and the cotter pin. It's their sign off that they make sure the wheel end is safe. Once again I put a little never seize onto the new hub and this just makes it easy to remove the rotor in future. I reinstall the rotor and then use one of the lug nuts to hold it in place while I install the caliper. I make sure to clean the rotor very, very well. You can be sure that some of that never sees has ended up on the surface. I can now cut off the zip tie that's holding the caliper and then reinstall the caliper. Remember to torque those bolts no more than 11 foot-pounds so that you do not strip out your knuckle. With the caliper installed and the caliper bolts torqued, we can now put the wheel back on and snug up the wheel nuts. All that's left to do is to torque down the wheel nuts. My book gives a value of 75 foot-pounds and remember that star pattern. Torque one bolt, skip one bolt, torque one bolt until they're all torqued down. As always we take the Jeep out for a test drive to make sure that there's no noise, vibrations and that the installation was done correctly. Job done.